Hello, 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 and thank you so much for tuning in to A Spoonful of Comfort. I am Claudine Jackson. I am your host for A Spoonful of Comfort, reminding you and me that in these uh, times of society that we're not going to be the ones that are not giving comfort. We're going to give comfort. And if you can't give comfort, at least don't give discomfort. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate the privilege of your time. Thank you so much for having your uh, TV tuned to this station, WHPR in Highland Park, that will go down in the city's history as one of the enduring uh, institutions that have been here all this, all these years. I'm um, thank you, thankful so much to R.J. Watkins and Henry Tyler for having having kept it going. You know, I uh, if you've seen the show before, then you know that my husband was a member of the Spinner Singing Group. So this kind of place was his area. It wasn't mine. I never expected to be. Uh, a part of the media. I was in the background because I always considered myself as a writer and I still do. So I didn't expect to be in front of the camera, although my husband was always uh, promoting me getting in front of the camera. Well, what changed my mind is being the parent of a son who cannot talk. Uh, Purvis Jackson Jr. is 44 years old now. He still can't read or write or talk or live independently, and uh, I wrote a book about him. The book was um, pushed by Purvis for me to write a book about our son, and I always said I can't write about uh, our son because it's not a success story. Every book that any parent of a child with autism wrote was this is how I cured my child. So I could not write that book. So Purvis always said, um, you can't write that book, but you can write about having a son with autism. You can write an autism story because every autism story won't be a success story. So because of the two Purvises, the Purvis up there and the Purvis down here, they keep me busy. And I'm blessed to be able to talk. That's the easiest thing in the world for me, but I have a son who cannot talk. So that's how the Purvis Foundation came about. I started the Purvis Foundation based on Purvis Jackson Sr. And uh, for years, we discussed what can we do to help children with handicaps because uh, being a parent is a difficult job no matter what. But being the parent of a child with a disability is even more difficult. And being the parent of a child with a disability who is poor, that's worse. So those are the parents that the Purvis Foundation tries to help. And uh, we can't help everyone. I really wish we could do more than what we do. But our uh, Purvis Foundation is based on the starfish story. I've told this starfish story before, but it's one of our guiding principles. This man was walking along the beach, and uh, he was throwing starfish back into the water because they had been washed up on the beach, and if you didn't throw them back into the water, they would die. So he's throwing starfish back into the water. And another man comes along and says, why are you doing this? It won't help. There are too many starfish on the beach. It won't make a difference. So the man picked up another starfish and threw it into the water, and he said it made a difference to that one. That's the attitude of the Purvis Foundation. We can't make a difference to everybody, but we can make a difference to somebody. So I want to thank the people that have donated to the Purvis Foundation through the Network for Good, through Facebook. Uh, and these donations are anonymous, so I don't know who you are that have made these donations, but I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. If my son was able to talk, he would also thank you. And a lot of the people that the Purvis Foundation helps 
cannot talk. So you can reach the Purvis Foundation at P.O. Box 04422, Detroit, Michigan, 48204. You can reach me at that post office box. You can also reach me uh, by email at Jackson Claudrine, that's C L A U D R E E N, Jackson Claudrine at sbcglobal.net. I, uh, oh, and Facebook. You can, the foundation is on Facebook. Uh, a Spoonful of Comfort is on Facebook. I also do a blog called A Spoonful of Comfort, and it's on the Internet. If you go to a spoonfulofcomfort.org, you can read uh, my blog. And it's also, uh, if you go to a spoonfulofcomfort.org, you will see the artwork that my son did. Now, when I talk about A Spoonful of Comfort, it's greatly needed now. Everyone has a spoonful of comfort because a spoonful is the minimum of anything that you can give anybody. So if you can give a spoonful of comfort, even when you don't feel like it, that that's how you get your blessings. Remember, a soft answer turneth away wrath. That's one of our scriptures. I uh, don't have the exact location of it, but you heard it, you know it, and somebody will let me know. Also, uh, Proverbs 16 and 24, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the spirit and health to the bones. Now, doesn't that make you feel that like pleasant words uh, are more, more um, effective? Present wor pleasant words are far more effective than harsh words. And then you never know what someone is going through. You, you never know uh, what has happened in their day. And uh, there were times with me when I was really going through a lot of uh, tribulation and trials and turmoil. But to see me, you wouldn't know it because we don't always wear it on our face. So you never know what someone is going through. So uh, try to remember pleasant words. Pleasant words. I also want to remind you to uh, hear my song, Almost, which you can go to treycruz.com. T-R-E-C-R-U-Z dot com. Treycruz.com. And you can hear my song that I wrote that my husband sang called Almost. And uh, Trey Cruz was a young man that my husband was mentoring when he passed away. And Trey... Uh, Trey was only 14 when my husband passed away, but he always said, I'm going to do something as a tribute to Purvis. So almost is a tribute to Purvis. So uh, if you go to TreyCruz.com and click on almost, you'll hear my song. You'll also see me and my daughters uh, dancing, if, if you want to call it that, in the video. So there's a video. And uh, at the very end of the video, Purvis Jr. shows up. So almost is proof to me that God is still working miracles in the world because my husband has been gone for 11 years. And this is a song that was put on the shelf, put away, never expecting anything to be done with it. And then we get three bass singers that decide they want to uh, release the song as a tribute to Purvis. So I'm very thankful, and I'm very honored, and I hope you get to hear the song. And remember, the song was sung by Purvis over 20 years ago, and they kept Purvis's voice and added their voices to it. So um, it's, it's uh, really an honor and a privilege for me to be able to tell you about that song. So... I, I was supposed to have a guest today. I don't know uh, if the guest will still show up, so I'll share a couple of my poems with you. Um, I'll share a couple of my poems with you. I'll share Love So Pure. This is the poem that was inspired by my son, who gave me so, many, so much strife for so many years that... Uh, 
it's a poem I never thought I would write. So I'm going to take a short break, but uh, I'll share the poem with you when I come back after the break. Please stay tuned for A Spoonful of Comfort. And please remember, you too have a spoonful of comfort. <laughs>
So I, I said I was going to share with you a poem that I wrote about my son uh, called A Love So Pure. He was always so hard to handle and so hard to um, manage and uh, very aggressive, very abusive to himself and others. So there was a time when I never predicted that I would write this kind of poem about him. But as he grew older and medication, he has um, calmed down. He's more manageable, more agreeable. He doesn't want to hurt people. So he used to get me, he's taller than I am, and he would get me by the shoulders and just hold my face in his hand and smile at me. It was the most beautiful feeling, and that's what inspired a love so pure. A love so pure that I am sure it's coming straight from God. This kind of love comes down from above and right into my heart. Your smiling eyes are a big surprise that I never thought I'd see. So who knew that one day you would be smiling down at me? How could I guess that I'd be blessed for taking care of you? You've taught me a lot of things about how love can be true. I never thought the day would come when you'd be teaching me. But now I'm sure that when love is pure, it's unconditionally. Uh, I see my guest has arrived. We're going to take a short break so that we can get her situated. She won't have much time, so I'll let her do all the talking. So we're going to take a short break again. When I was 17, I ran away from home and from everything. Well, thank you so much for sticking with me for A Spoonful of Comfort. As you see, my lovely, talented guest has arrived. This is Sharon Love Jones. Hello, everybody. And she has a lot going on. We don't have a lot of time, but we're going to try to uh, capture what she has that's going on. And we're going to start with your album that's coming out. It is actually a single. It, a single? It, it actually is two singles. Okay. Two different singles. And my favorite one um, was written and produced by one of the Four Tops, ah. by the lead singer for the Four Tops, Alex. Um, I don't want to talk too much about names and all that stuff, right, but right. but I just love it. It's a ballroom hustle song. Oh. It's called Step With It. Ah, and see, I don't dance much, but I can do the hustle, so okay. I'll be so able to. Can you step a little bit? Just a little bit. I but, can't either. But, but I can I'm learn. learn. Yes, I am I'll have to learn too because yeah. of your song. So yes. I have some people working on um, the video side of it. Yes. I have three different groups. It's gonna. Well, this song actually uh, will will appear to young youngsters. Yes. Um, over, over fifty. Like me. Over fifty. Yes. And in the middle. Right. So and and and. You can do a Latin type dance to it. And how also. will we be able to get this song when it comes out? You'll be able to get it off of um, every um, music hub. Okay. There is. You know, okay. It's going to be on a lot of them. I can't say exactly right now because it's not out yet. Okay. And you can, but you can say the name of it. Can you say the name of the song? Step With Me. Step With Me by Sharon Love Jones. Remember that, folks. Step With Me by Sharon Love Jones. And it's a fantastic song. I'm so excited about it. I, I have not ever been excited like this over a song. I guess, number one, because it's mine. Right. And number two is just, I love the song. I just love it so much. It's got a really good good feel to it and I just know well, we'll have to have you back on when the song comes yeah. out and you'll have to push that song help me push that song yes, right yes okay. yes so yeah so uh, tell people how they can contact you if I can be contacted um, through email and uh, and my my no my phone number is 248-259-4278 my email address is s h a j o n e s 906 at gmail.com um are you a detroit native i am i'm a detroit resident um i live over in the um bagley area oh okay yeah. 
of living so born and raised in Detroit no 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 I was born born in Mississippi raised in Saginaw my mom died when I was three years old and I was living in Mississippi um, then my grandmother yeah. she was a Saginaw resident she and that's where I resided um, my career brought me to Detroit okay wonderful so I'm not gonna tell you how old <laughs> Well, I'll I will tell you to guess what you won't guess. I'll Nobody tell you how old I am because you because I, I I tell it because I want because people to proud, know. Because you're proud, you're still yes, beautiful. Because I'm 80. Oh wow! And I was I turned 80 in June. I never would have guessed. And that. I have a poem that I wrote called "I'm 79," okay. but you know I wouldn't read the poem until I got 80. Okay. Because people were saying, "Don't tell your age, don't tell your age," but I thought I need to let people know that you can get 80 and still have it's okay. Your juices yeah. flowing. Yeah. So. Um, and rub some of that off on me, because <laughs> I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. And I want you to know that I met this lady at the Sunrise Legacy Awards right. that were held at uh, the Dearborn Performing Arts Center, and she looked beautiful. I love the outfit that you had on, That's and right. she sounded great. And I said, I've got to have her on my show. So and I'm I am so, so glad. grateful. I'm so grateful that you have me here today. I, amen. I am. I am really grateful, and I'm honored to be here. And for you know, to anyone who respect what I'm doing, yes, and respect me as a person, you know, um, I'm very grateful. Now, on your uh, business card, it says writer. Also, so do you do some writing? Yes, I, I do. Um, I I wrote. I write songs. Yeah, I do write songs. Yes. But the song, my two, I, I also do gospel music. And I wrote two gospel songs, which I have not even tried to even do anything with yet. And I, one thing about a song, you can write it and you can just sit it there. Yes. You can go back f to it five, ten years later. So, um, my song, I have a song that's out now. Oh, really? That my husband sang. Okay. And um, I was just talking about it before you came in. So... I, it's from the from my book of poems that I wrote, and he took the song and sang it. And uh, my husband passed away 11 years ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But his song is out now because some other bass singers have put the song out. I thought out. I was going to do it. <laughs> Who talks about me doing it? Some, some other bass singers have put the song out as a tribute to okay. Purvis Jackson. Oh, that's very And nice. that deals to show you it's never too late. It's never too with late. With music and with books, because yeah. this book is from, I, this book first came out in 95. Wow. But my husband uh, wanted to do something with something from the book, right. and he did, but he passed away, oh. and it's still being done. Right, right. So, it's never too late. And the, the thing about music and clothes and hairdos and all that they they go they go in cycles yes you know yes. they go away and they come back yes right now i see a lot of different artists um out there you know working their music and stuff and they're going right back to to the older music yes they're going right back to it and they're doing the new music on the older style and that's where i'm doing one of my one of my um releasing another song that i did with um, the band called Rumpelstiltskin. I was on the road with them for 13 years straight. Wow, we was, wonderful. We were in demand. And we had like two weeks off of a year. And I have to say for myself, we were great. We rehearsed four days a week and worked six nights a week in, in nightclubs and, and doing one-nighters and stuff. So, And on our some of our off days, we went in the studio and recorded. We, we, we did five albums. Right. right. Albums. Wonderful. Albums. Wonderful. That's how long ago it was. And they last. Yeah, they did. I told you about my, my song, that my husband sang, and he's been gone 11 years. He, he's not here to see it, but I believe he knows. He's, he's watching. You. I believe he's smiling yeah, down. He's smiling and, down. And, on yes. You. Um, so, is there much work around the city of Detroit? Um, if, if, back in the 70s, when my oh husband my was, God, was back so in the 60s, when my husband was getting yes. started, there were all kinds of clubs where performers yeah, could yeah, yeah. perform. There were all kinds of talent shows. The spinners got their start at the Duke Theater mm -hmm. for talent shows. They mm -hmm. had talent night mm -hmm. one night a week. So there's not, is there anything like that going on? Well, in the you city? know what? There are a lot of jam sessions going on now. It's pretty much, okay, there are a lot of jam sessions going on. And the, art, the new artists nowadays out there trying to get where they need to go and everything, 
some of them are not even messing with the clubs at all. Okay. They're just doing, they're putting their music out, which I I wish I had it done first. Yeah. You know, just stayed at home put, and got in the studio and put my music out. But the ones that are out there... A lot you run into. This is what you run into a lot of times. The clubs don't want to pay you right. Ah, uh, yes, yes. What I see for 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 African Americans now is the inner city clubs, the um, the neighborhood clubs and stuff. They're trying to open their doors more. Yes. For um, for us. Right. And the suburbs are not. They're closing their doors ah, for us. A lot. Okay. Yeah. So, so more. You see it more and more. So that's where a lot of the artists are getting their experience from. Because back in the 60s, uh, the Spinners, the Four Tops, the Miracles, the Temptations, they all got started at the same time. Mm -hmm. And they, the, the joke was that on any corner under a street light, you find a group they just start singing, singing yeah. and harmonizing. That's where they get their but, practice. But the harmony back then was so tight because yes. they practiced yes, and practiced yes. and practiced. And I, I know exactly how, how that is because like the band I was telling you about, Rumpelstiltskin Ivy was our recording name. We rehearsed four days a week. Yes. We traveled all over the United States, but I don't care where we were, we rehearsed. And and that's when we were working six, five and six nights in the club. We were tired. We, you yes. Know, we got and, it but in. But I'm glad that you're still doing it. And I'm still. I'm glad. Oh my God. I'm glad that that you're still doing it. If you got the music in you, you got the music in you. But you know, sometimes we have to wait on. It's not always our time. Yes. Regardless right. of how much we do and right. what we do, it's not our time. But but the 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 trick. The, the key is something I learned from my husband, yeah. that you don't give up. You don't give because up. Because there were times when the spinners would be performing and not making any money, mm -hmm. or they'd be performing, and mm -hmm. there'd be very few people in the audience. Mm -hmm. And I would want to say, well, why do you keep doing this? And you but have I to never perform. said it. If I never there's two said people it. in the audience, you still have to perform that's like, right. like the house is that's full. That's right. And that's where you get, you know, you get it up here, and, you know. Yes, and, and that's one there. of the things that he would tell me because I worked at the 20 grand. And are you old enough to know about the 20 grand? I wasn't here, but, but I do you, know about it. And the uh, 20 grand, the artists worked 10 nights in a row, three shows a night. So they really worked that's, that's hard. That's how I work overseas. Is it? Yes, I have to ask. After two months, I just... Because I do doubles, two doubles, doubles on the weekends, um, and seven days a week in the club. Yes, that's, you have to ask. That's work. That's, that's a lot of work. work. And you got to be strong. You can't. You know, it takes a certain kind of strength to yes. go in there, yes. go in it like that. And you, I, I get, I work so much, and then I get my body breaks down, and I have to be man. Uh, of course, off. because yeah. you, everything has to. Yeah, you have Your to body charge can only your take so phone. much. Yeah. You have to. Uh, yeah. Uh, stop and recharge mm -hmm. your yes, batteries right. because you're putting out so that's much. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that you are because music is therapy for the soul. Yes, it is. Music is the great equalizer mm -hmm. all over the world, as you mm -hmm. know, because you say you've appeared overseas. Yes, yes. Music is the same everywhere. It is. And music is a great equalizer for everyone. Yes, I've it been is. on um, trips and the music comes on. You might not understand the words, but you understand the that melody, beat and the, the melody, melody and the, the voice. Yes. Yeah. So you got to continue to um, perform. And sometimes I feel like, oh my God, I want a job. I want a nine to five. But then again, I. But I didn't go to school. I've been a singer all my life. Well, because the music so is in you. So I have to try you. another That's area. That's what you're supposed you know. to do. The music is it's in you. Me, so. You are supposed to sing. And if it's in you, like writing is in me. I write so much. But my husband used to always say, I've got to do something with this writing, yeah. uh, with your writing. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, no, that's not necessary. But he always wanted to do something and put my writing out to the public. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's about time for us to go. I'm so glad that you made it, and you're going to have to come back after your song comes out or anytime you feel like well, it. I'll just wait until my music comes out, and then you can let everybody hear my music. I, hopefully they'll be hearing it anyway yes. on, the, on the radio. So, so thank you to Sharon Love and Jones. Thank you so much. Thank you to our uh, watching audience. Have a good week, and remember, you too have a spoonful of comfort.